Okay, ready? Yes, so, ready. What's up, everyone? I'm sitting here with Eddie. Uh, you know, Hi. Eddie was sadly uh, evicted from the double eviction um, last week on Big Brother Canada 6. Eddie, how you doing? What's going on? What's going on, buddy? Okay, uh, so much is going on right now. Um, obviously, I'm pretty sad that I got evicted so early because I still think that I have so many more to prove. But it is what it is, you know. And I'm so glad that I see so many support from, you know, people online. Like, I wasn't expecting that because I haven't done a lot of game moves. So I wasn't expecting so many support. And I feel so humbled right now. So humbled. Yeah, no, it's great. You know, I, I was I was actually there at the live taping uh, at your eviction. I was there uh, for the double. And I'll tell you, man, the crowd was sad to see you go up. They were sad to see you go. And uh, you know what? The reaction, everyone's cheering your name. That was amazing. Uh, one thing, one thing, you know, that the viewers didn't get to see that day, but we got to see live in the studio was, um, I think it was a Stefania. She asked you, she says, you know, uh, how was your experience? You know, did you like it? And, you know, it, everyone in the audience is like, oh, man, because you're like, no, like, I didn't like it. And everyone was kind of like, oh, man, poor Eddie. Like, we feel for you, man, because we get it. Like, we know uh, what it's like in there. And, and it's, it's not easy, man. And it's, and it's tough. And I think a lot of people that go in after realize how much harder it is uh, than, you know, when you're watching it sh at home. So, mm. like, what are some of the questions I want to ask is, is what was the big difference? Like, what, going into the game, what was your mindset? Like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. And then when you get there, how did it like, kind of all change, you know? Okay, obviously in this game, going into this game, I have a lot of strategy, right, playing out for me. But obviously, um, everything looks so different in the house, you know? Like, all of my strategy has just been thrown out in the house day one. Um, like, day one... Uh, Adam won that week, right? And to be honest, I feel the most distant to Adam week one. So I was pretty scrambled like that time because I feel like the wrong person win week one. Um, so at that point, I was trying to create another person. You know, like I was trying to lay very low, um, like not very low, but lower, you know, that, that I'm supposed to lay. And I feel like that's kind of set the whole tone of my whole gameplay from now on because I couldn't go from being, you know, like very quiet to suddenly very loud, right? That That's not how it works. So I do feel like week one was um, a defining moment for my gameplay. And uh, yeah, and it's so different from I originally thought. Yeah, now that's that's the thing too. It's it's pe what people don't understand at home is when you're playing in the game, you can't control. Like if someone else wins power, it really mm -hmm. changes the game dr dramatically, and your 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 strategy and everything you want to do has to change and adapt. And I mean, you know, a lot of people were cheering for you guys. You know, uh, you and Kiki and Esty and and they wanted to see you guys. You know, take the power and and make the move. It's just it's hard. The other side of the house. Uh, there, there's a lot of strong players that are winning the competition. So it's hard to make the moves you want to make when, you know, the other side just has the power. That's that's the way it is. Um, yeah, it is. Sorry, it is very hard. Um, and to be honest, I really wanted to work with Kiki and Asti. Um, week one, when Kiki went in, she made a final. Actually, I, I know they don't show it on TV, but like right after Kiki went inside the house, she made a final two with me that week. And I was really going to make it work you know, i was really sticking to it but the same week like kiki and asti also threw my name out to adam the same week so that's not going to work but i was still really looking out for them i told them about you know like week two when they're still not in the loop about you know the, the whole voting thing um I, I really knew already how the vote is going to go because anthony clue me in you know so um and i tried to talk with kiki asti but they kind of dismissed it um you know i tried to give them this information but like yeah it, it really sucks for me personally that i i want them to trust me but I, they don't um i really want kiki asti and damien to trust me but from some for some reason every single information i gave them they run around and told them you know yeah. um so yeah um it, it's very hard for me because i really 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 wanted it to make it work but it just didn't yeah that's that's the hardest part right it's because you know when yeah. we're sitting at home we see everything uh, everything you know but but the people that realize what's going on like for you for example 
there's nobody on the planet right now that knows what's really going on in that game or at least the feelings in the game like you do. You're in the house, and I try to tell people all the time, it's, you know, we're watching at home. Yes, we get the answers. We get the feeds and all that stuff, but you get the body language. You get mm. you you get to witness what it's the feelings in the house. You know, when someone walks in a room, how people change their attitudes, how people adjust to it. That's stuff that you don't know and you can't feel unless you're actually in that house. So exactly. you have you have the the most knowledge right now to anybody right now of what it really feels like in that house. And we can watch feeds and shows and all that stuff every day. And we still will never get that exact feeling that you know, and that you feel, um, what, what's some of that, what's the biggest uh, watch you watch the show. You're caught up on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what's the biggest thing that you saw on this show that you didn't know in the house when you were in there, what was the thing you were like, Oh man, I didn't see that. Like I couldn't piece it together. What was the biggest surprise for you? I mean, obviously, the Pretty Boys Alliance is the biggest surprise for me. I know they're working together. I know that, but I didn't know it was an official alliance. You know what I mean? I know the boys are working together, but I didn't know it was an official alliance. Um, yeah, and surprisingly, Adam, Sam, and Chelsea isn't even like aren't even that close as I as I thought. Because um, you know, even um, even before the eviction, right? When Chelsea crew me in, you know about you know how strong the boys are. Like they're really working together. Um, I still kind of thought that maybe her, Adam, and Chelsea were trying to stage this, you know, trying to stage a fake fight or a fake beef to try to keep Chelsea. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really expect the Voice Alliance to be that strong. And to be honest, um, day one, I kind of went to Adam and kind of you know, told him that, you know, like, maybe we should work together, um, you know, um, maybe we should get all the boys together, too. And um, so I thought it was my, this was my idea in the beginning, and I didn't know that they went on with this idea without including me, so that kind of hurts. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's and that's, it is and, it is. and that's, that's another thing I want to say, too. It's like your perception of what's going on is your reality. Yes. If you believe that they're staging a fight, you believe they're staging a fight. It, that's exactly. just, that's the way it is. You have to see what you see. So you can't yeah. blame you. If that's what you think, you can't blame you, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, and, and another thing too, when, when you, you knew a double was coming, everyone kind of knew the double was coming, what, like, what was going through your mind? Did you think you were in danger? Did you think you were safe? If the double came, like, where did you think you fit where the, when, the, when the double came? Did you think you were in a good spot, in a bad spot? What were you thinking? Okay, I definitely anticipated the double was coming, right? Because it always happened week four. Um, and on that week, I was trying to, you know, um, I was trying to make some moves with Damien and Kiki and Asti. Um, but the thing is, like, I really, like, I, I, I um, okay, so basically with Damien, I told Damien that, you know, like, uh, Dane was, Dane and Anthony was trying to flip the vote against him with Mama in the last minute, because when, when he was, went up, uh, going up there against Mama, right? In the last minute, I know that Dane and Anthony was trying to flip the vote against uh, Damien, um, that was on Sean on TV. Um, but yeah, uh, but I was telling the truth, and after I, yeah, and after I told Damien the truth, trying to you know gain some trust from him, um, he like literally like ten minutes later, he went to tell Dang about it, uh, you know, and I feel like Dang didn't trust me from that like from that on, um, because I really did try to talk to Damien, Kiki, and Asti. I really tried to talk with you know people in the outside, but like uh, they were not very respect. Res like responsive so i knew that at that time they like there's nothing else i can do you know what i mean because you can't really force yourself into other people's conversation right no, and you know yeah yeah and, and, and then they and then that week they was telling me before that you know i should work you know like me st kiki damien and Dane should be very like should be five strong you know like sh should work very very tightly but then i walked into you know I walked into the archive room and I walked into the meeting. Um, you know, Dane was talking, Dane was having a, like a very heated meeting with um, ST, Kiki and Damien. And at that moment, I knew that I wasn't included, you know, because you can't just tell someone that, you know, okay, we have to work together yeah. and they have a very, very heated meeting behind their back, right? At that time, I know that there was nothing else I could do. You know what I mean? I don't want to force myself to other people's conversation. Um, so on the last two days leading up to the, the double eviction, I was trying to, you know, appear to the other house get that I'm a very lonely person without any allies. I was literally, I would literally just sit there on the couch, you know, on, on or on the bed in front of other people. When other people are talking, you know, are chatting, I would, I would literally sit 
on the coast before them to let them know that I have no allies. I'm all by myself. And, you know, double evictions, usually the time when people want to take out a very strong threat, right? Because why would you waste a double eviction on someone who has no allies? That makes no sense. Well, um, it's, so it's it's funny you say that because that's uh, that's a good move to make because, uh, you know, I, and, and a perfect example in season five did the same thing where it's like you want to seem lonely. You want to seem like you have nobody. Uh, why would you take out someone that has nobody when you could take someone out on a double that has a lot of ties like a Dane or whoever that you can just this is the time to do it. Get rid of them. They can't do anything. And you're right. That's that's a good play. It just I guess it, it, it didn't it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't, why, it didn't work. Why do you think why do you think everyone gravitates towards Dane so much? Why do you think people want to work with him? Why do you think people run and tell him everything? You're saying like Damien runs and tells him everything. Why? Why do you think? Does he have a good social game? Uh, do people actually trust him? Uh, or you know, everyone you're hearing people talk about the pretty boys and a guy's alliance, but everyone's still running to him and giving him information. Why? Why do you think that is? I, I don't understand it. I feel like people are scared. You know, what I mean, I feel like Dane is a it's a very social player for sure. Um, but I also feel like Dane is okay. So Adam is obviously a very big threat, right? But Adam is very in your face kind of guy. You know what I mean? Like he shows his emotion on his face. So he may be seen as a bigger threat than Dane. Like Dane was also a very big threat for sure, but at least he's nice to you in public. You know yeah. what I mean? I know yeah. that there's there's a whole other side of him. I walk into him, you know, being very frustrated and, you know, like cursing and stuff. And I saw a whole different side of Dane, um, you know, when I walk into him in private. Um, but at least in the surface, on the surface, Dane is very nice to you. He will say whatever you want to hear. Um, so I feel like people uh, know that Dane controls the house, kind of know that Dane kind of controls the house too, because he has so many alliances, everyone like him, at least on the surface. No one really dare to talk bad about him. And the thing is, to be honest, everything you say about Dane, you know, it will run around and get back to his ears eventually, right? So maybe people are scared of that. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. And, and it's kind of a double-edged sword because people are afraid of him and know he's a bigger, the, like the bigger uh, social player and he's connected. But then everyone keeps feeding him all the information. So what makes him the the bigger player, the connected player, because everyone's giving him the information out of fear. And, you know, it happens every single season. And it's kind of a weird thing because everyone says, hey, this is the this guy right here is doing really good. But yet everyone wants to work with him and everyone wants to give him the information. So he has the game figured out. He has everyone's playbooks and he understands where everyone sits because everyone's giving him the answer. So. Uh, it's it's a it's a double edged sword. Like I say, those are usually the times that like a double or something when you take a player out like that. Uh, they can't use the information they have. It's quick things. They're up on the block and they're out the door. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I said, we were there for the double. It sucked to see you go. Uh, you know, we, we, everyone was cheering. Even the crowd was cheering for you. It was great. Uh, one thing, one thing that they showed in the audience um, that you know the other house guests don't know, and I'm sure you might not even know because they didn't show it on the on the on the uh, episode was mm -hmm. when Adam was in the pantry, there was a lot of talk going on. And actually, they didn't give Samantha the credit I think she deserved um, in there because, you know, everyone was coming in one at a time to Adam, kind of giving their spiel, like, oh, put this person up, put that person up. And Sam was the last one in, and she said, I think they were going to put, uh, I don't remember who he was going to put up, but Sam came in and said, listen, no, 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 You, this is not the time to do that. you got to make a move. This is a double eviction. Make your move. Take a shot. Make it count. And uh, it kind of had his wheels turning, but I think the damage was too late because he already promised, you know, six, seven people before she came in that he was going to do what he did, uh, which was a shame because I think if Sam went in first and got in his ear and said, no, 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 I, like, this is what are you doing? Do this. This is the move, man. This is your chance to make a move. Uh, and he, he didn't do it. Do you think Adam made a mistake? I mean, obviously, you're the one going out, but do you think going forward, who do you think he should have taken out on the double? Who do you think his target should have been? Okay, to be honest, I really do think that Adam made a mistake by uh, targeting me because on that week, I was literally not targeting Adam. If I won the HOH, I would put up Dang and Mark in an instant because I recognize that Dang is a more, da more dangerous player than Adam. So, um, and the thing is, I do see that, like, I, okay, um, I, I obviously know what's going on in the house, right? But I do also think that Sam is kind of lonely or kind of like a long wolf in that house. Um, like, yeah, um, so so I so I was going to work with Sam, you know, for maybe two two or three weeks. So you know, um, and I know that Sam kind of cares about Adam. So yeah, I, I really do feel like Adam wasted his age age on me. He should have put out Dang. I threw Dang's name out to him, you know, with with 
S T and Kiki. Cause okay, um, I know on I know on TV I I threw S T Kiki and Dang to him, right? Because I don't want him to know that I'm already aware that he and Dang was working together. I want to appear very clueless to him. You know, although I already know that he and Dang was working together, I still want to appear to be very clueless to him to let to make him feel that I'm looking out for his game. You know, um, because. Because he supposedly he and Sam want me, want me to believe there are two sides in the house, right? And then uh, Dang asked because Sam was literally to- telling me the other day that you know like uh, Dang, Asti, and Kiki are a very strong alliance, so you, you, you couldn't break that. So I was throwing this to Adam to make him feel like I want to keep his number, I want to work with him, but that didn't work out. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely feel like that is Adam should put out Dang because I feel like Dang will turn on Adam in an instant. I, I think I think so too. I think you're right. I think when the time yeah. comes, Dane wants to get rid of him. Uh, it's his biggest competitor. You know, when they're in competitions and stuff, uh, Adam is the one that can beat Dane. It's going back and forth. And I think you're right. I think Dane's waiting for that shot and to take it uh, for sure. Now I want to talk. I want to talk about a few other things. I want to talk about. Uh, you know, Damon had that vote going in where he could go into the lounge first thing. Mm. Uh, what do you think of that? What did you think of him going in the house, you know, before anybody? He watched, you know, Adam kind of make the the alliance, the pretty boys, and he didn't do anything about it. What do you think uh, he should have done or do you think he did the right thing? Or what do you think, you know, with him going in, getting that kind of information right away, uh, what do you think he should have done? Um, I do feel like Damien wants to join the Pretty Boy Alliance, so that I feel like that's why he didn't say anything. Because, um, you know, in this game, you have to go with the numbers, right? You have sure. to go, because I, I feel like Damien recognized, you know, how strong that side is. And maybe I feel like Damien wants to, maybe want to join them. So that's why he didn't say anything. Or maybe he wasn't, I, I don't know if he, he was aware of, you know, how how strong an alliance could be, because he only watched one season, right? Sure. So, um, so, so, so I, I don't even know if he's aware, but if he's aware, I feel like he wants to join them. That's why he didn't say anything. Um, but I don't know, to be honest. Obviously, I feel like he should have used the information first like even like especially when we're like in this like when on week three week four right like he, he should have used this information further to you know um to help his game but sometimes i feel like maybe he feels like um he's being outnumbered or even if he you know even if, if he even say anything other people will go around and tell the boys that he said it um and then he will become a target right um because damien was on the block week one you know when you're on a block you become very scared right you, you just want don't want to be a pawn anymore and we see that damien was the pawn week one and week three you know it, you know like in this game if you become pawn for a week you 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 your likelihood to become pawn yeah. just like you know yeah yeah and i really it's- really wanted yeah, exactly. I really, really wanted to work with Damien. I really, really do. And I talk, like, I, I, I tried talking games with him, but like he told me that, you know, like um, right now he just, he, he, he wanted to survive, you know, because he was put on a block already. Um, so he, so he just want to, you know, like he, he wouldn't make any moves until he knows who the next HOH is. So like they, he wouldn't want, even want to, you know, plan things ahead so yeah i i feel like at this point at that point he was pretty scared and he just wanted to ensure his own survival which is very fair which is very fair yeah. um because because sometimes you have to you know like lay low and you know like and make moves when you can right because if you oh, are sure. out of the yeah because if you're out of the game before you even make moves then what's the point right yeah. so if right, yeah yeah so you can make moves doing. if you're out of the game yeah i see I what get it. like here. he's trying to he's just trying to save himself for sure and that's it he's trying to yes. get later in the game absolutely uh um, yes. now what who do you think you know you watched the show you said and obviously you were in the house who do you think is getting a fair edit like who do you think is getting you know it's, it's all right who do you think is getting the golden edit we call it where it's like they're getting the edit to be better than they are and who do you think isn't getting enough credit uh on the tv show oh um to be honest i i watched this i, I watched the episodes but i didn't watch them very closely like i yeah. was doing other things when i was doing the episode so i didn't really pay attention to the edits <laughs> i mean i watched the episode but i, but I was I'm also multitasking when doing them right um i but i do feel like uh, it's uh I do feel like they miss a lot of gameplay. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like they miss a lot of like dynamic in the game. Like, um, yeah, I, I couldn't give you a straight answer right now because I was literally not very paying attention when I was looking yeah, no, at episodes. Enough. Yeah, yeah. So sorry. Yeah, no, fair, no, no, no. Fair enough. Because yeah, I, yeah. I understand. I, I completely understand. And and you're right when you say they miss a lot of the dynamics and stuff like that in the show. Absolutely. I feel 
a, a lot of times a social game or a strategic game is very hard to, to show um, on to the viewers where, you know, an entertaining game is very easy to show because they're, they're putting on a show and it's very easy to kind of show what they're doing. Um, <clears throat> so usually every year there's somebody that usually gets a, a good edit where because they have to be the narrator or the or, or show the show and there's people that are doing a lot of work but it's very under the radar a lot of stuff that you can't really show it's hard to show to a viewer like a good social game or a good little conversation sometimes that it's a bore it's boring to put on a show but it really changes the dynamics of the game so it's it's, exactly. it's yeah it's very yes. hard to show some of those games for sure Yes, and um, to be honest, if you are not on a block that like that week, right, and you, you just like doing work behind the scene, it's very hard to show you because like it doesn't really match the theme of you know that week. Because you know if you're on a block, then obviously you got a lot of screen time, right? But if you're not on a block or you're not even in danger, then it's really hard to show you because like um, it wouldn't be very relevant to that episode, you know, exactly. to the to the storyline. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, and that's usually how it is. It's the it's the two people on the block, the HOH and the POV holder, or a backdoor option. Those are the people you will always see on the episodes in the diary room because the, you they have to tell the viewers where their head's at, how they're feeling. But if you're not in any danger, there's really no need for you to be on the screen because you're not part of that week's storyline. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. And I try to explain it to people too. A lot of screen time doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. It means that you're very involved in either the drama or what's going on, uh, good or bad. You know what I mean? So not having screen time isn't a bad thing. Uh, obviously, you want to get screen time, but it means you're actually playing a decent game that you're not in danger or you're not on the block or whatever it is. Um, also... I want to talk to you about this blood veto. What do you, what do you think of the whole blood veto? What do you think of everything, um, you know, finding out about it and all that? What what do you, what do you think the blood veto is gonna be? Um, okay, I feel like the blood veto is very anticlimactic because they didn't really show you what a blood veto is from the beginning. So I I don't know like why Damien like was even in the launch for twice and then he didn't even you know get a clue for the blood veto. It just makes no sense to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the way that you know the blood veto is chosen, like the, the the people um who is chosen to get the blood veto was by you know a unanimous a unanimous decision that just sounds very anticlimactic to me so i and yeah and the thing is that it was so hyped up from the beginning of the season right and yeah. so i don't know i don't know i, I don't know what the blood beater would be but i do feel like it may be the same as a golden power of veto um otherwise why would they hype it up from the beginning of the season right they call it yeah. the biggest power of the season so i i don't know but i feel like maybe it will be similar to golden power of veto you know, like, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 and that's the thing, too. Like you say, they hype this thing up, but they don't explain what it does. So nobody knows what it does, and that's the part of Big Brother I don't like. <clears throat> Excuse me, where, uh, you know, they have this power, and they're not telling you what it is. They should, first thing, first episode, this is the blood veto, this is what it does, this is when it's coming out, but they don't do that. And I feel they don't do that because they want to save certain players. So when a certain player is in danger, it's like, oh, we got to put this thing into play. Also, I don't like how, uh, they, yeah, they're saying the unanimous vote. I, I think in production's mind, they had it playing out differently. Because I'll tell you something, if I was on the block, and that blood veto is sitting there, I'd still be sitting there. Three days later, I'd still be sitting there with my hand on that button if I was on the block. So the fact that everyone was just like, yeah, give it to Kira, um, I think the production was kind of like, oh, sh like, what are we doing here? Like, this is not supposed to play out this way. It was supposed to be more of like a fight back and forth. You know, nobody wants to get off. Everyone wants this veto. But I think it backfired on them because nobody wanted it. Everyone's like, you know what? Let Kira have it. Uh, Kira's not in danger. And uh, Kira can do what she wants with it or, or what they want with it. And that's the part I think that production didn't like because I think they felt like everyone was going to fight over it and nobody wanted it. And they're just like, yeah, go ahead. And the fact that um, Adam was the one or whoever said, why don't we just give it to Kira? And everyone's like, mm. okay. That part to me was weird because, you know, you're everyone's playing their own game. If you're in danger, like Kiki, for example, should still be there right now fighting for it. And she should not leave without that veto because simply saying, hey, I'm the target this week. I need this veto. I'm not leaving until it's in my hands. That's that's what her mentality should have been. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So you think it's like a golden power veto? What's that where they use the veto and then they replace the nominee? Yes. Like the veto you got, you know, kind of factor in your season, you know. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one that still hurts? Yeah. yeah. I feel like it may be something similar than that because it has to have a lot of power, right? Otherwise, why wouldn't like why like why would they? You know, literally showed the video in episode one saying it, you know, the biggest power of the season. So, yeah, I, I imagine it would be similar to the one that, you know, that kind of fucked you up, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, I, that, that's what I that's what I think, too. I think it's whoever. Ha- yeah. I mean, but we don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, we don't know. Nobody but knows. But what I, what I think, I think it's the same thing. I think whoever now Kira has it um, come whenever the time is. Uh, they can just say, okay, I use the veto and I'm putting these people up on the block. I think that's, I, I mean, that's what everyone thinks, but nobody knows. Um, yeah. and, and you know what? That kind of sucks in a way. Um, I just, I don't think the veto, I don't think the twist played out in production's mind as they thought it was going to. I think they thought it was going to play out differently with everyone fighting, but nobody did. Uh, and whatever. Uh, who, who do you think right now is in the best spot in the season? I feel like Anthony is in the best spot of the season because obviously he has a very strong alliance that is literally like stream lowering, like dominating the game, right? But he was never seen as a like as a leader or as a thing or, or as a threat. You know what I mean? Like Adam, Adam obviously he's a he's a huge threat. Dane is catching up on people. People has are starting to catching up on how big of a threat he is, right? But Anthony he didn't want win any competition. Well, he didn't win any HOH. I don't believe he won any competitions. Um, I, I, I wasn't catching a lot on, on, you know, what is going on right now. And Anthony is literally like napping all the time. Like he was sleeping all the time in the house. And, you know, like um, everyone like, likes Anthony. Even I believed in Anthony, you know, even I trusted Anthony, you know, even Mama K trusted Anthony. Every, he just have a very soothing qualities to other people to make other people, you know, like him. And, you know, his voice, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing, and, and that's a social game. And I agree. I think Anthony's doing. I think Anthony's doing really well. I think he's doing a lot better than I thought he would have done. Um, and he seems very social for sure. He seems very social, and and that's the thing. I think if people trust him or just want to talk to him, and like you say, it's a soothing quality. And you you were liking him too, and that's a thing. I think that goes very far in the game. And I think he's doing a really good job too. I I agree. So you don't think he's in any danger? Nobody wants to put him up or anything like that, eh? Like I think is that what you're trying to say? Like nobody's he's on nobody's radar basically. Yes, I feel like people will start targeting Adam and Dang before he they know that they went to uh they, they target Anthony. And I do feel like the Purple Alliance is going to be a very strong alliance that's going to the end. So if like if anything if, if people are starting to catch up to their alliance and start, you know, targeting that alliance, people will literally put up Adam and Dang before they even put up Anthony. So I feel like Anthony got, you know, all base, all of his bases covered. Yeah. True. And where do you, where do you think Sam sits in all this now? Because you're saying they want to put up uh, Adam and and Dane. Did you yeah. say Adam and Dane or Anthony and Dane? Adam and Dane. Uh, Adam and Dane. Yeah. Adam and Dane. Adam, okay. Uh, where do you think where do you think Sam sits in this though? Like, uh, is, is she in a good spot? Do you think you think she's in a bad spot? Where where does she sit right now? I feel like Sam wants to do a lot of things, but like I do feel like she's also very loyal to Adam. You know, I do feel like that, and Adam will you know any move she wants to make, Adam will make sure to kill that move before that ever it ever happens. So I don't I don't really know about how Sam fits in the house and she like she's just it seems like she's doing a lot a lot of dirty works for the boys. That's it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's tough. It's tough. I mean, again, you know better than we do because you're in there and all that stuff. I just see what I see from the show and all that stuff. But yeah, you know, it's t- and I agree. I think uh, I, I think it's a it's a weird dynamic. I think they're they turn into kind of like a powerhouse, but at the same mm. time, I feel like they're. Not very, I think they're very at the lowest part of the totem pole because they're a target too. But again, like I say, you know this stuff better than us and everybody watching because you're in that house and, yeah. and you're feeling it. Um, what about Damien? What do you think of Damien? You think he's doing an okay job, a good job? You think he's safe? You think he's going going to be there for a while? Do you think he's on their tar- on their target list? Where do you, where do you think he sits right now? I feel like Damien will also go. Uh, okay, Damien is a pawn, obviously, right? But like I I do feel like people want because. Damien established established himself to be, you know, a more trustworthy guy to other people. And people feel like anything they tell Damien, he wouldn't go around and tell other people. I mean, I thought that, but I don't know if other people thought that. Um, I mean, Damien will go a long way. I don't think he will win the show, but I feel, because I feel like, you know, like um, the other guys are obviously um, tighter than 
you know, there with him. Um, but I do feel like he will go a long way because he's very likable too. He's very likable. And the thing, the, the thing is he looks very like kind of reserved on the show so that he can lay low too. So people wouldn't want to target him. And the thing is that he already established himself to other people that he looks very trustworthy. It's also a very golden quality because, you know, if there ever is a crack within the, the Pretty Boy Alliance, they will want to get Damien to replace one of the members. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. For sure, he's a, he's a he's a big, strong guy, and absolutely, I, I agree. I think he's in a spot where both sides would kind of want to work with him. If there are the cracks, I, mean, I, I believe they would go to him too, kind of as like a replacement or or, yeah. or something like that. Um, who would you say uh, when you watch the show back? Who had you fooled the most? Like, who did you? I mean, other than Anthony, you said Anthony kind of you know he's a mm-hmm. good talker and all that stuff. Yeah. But who did you feel like okay, like this is, or who did you even feel like you? This is who I want to work with. This is where all my eggs are in their basket. Like, did you have a ride or die? Is there someone that you trusted completely, uh, or is it all a show? What what what's going through your mind the whole time? I mean, I'm very surprised they didn't show more relationship with me and Kaylin because I really trusted Kaylin. I really wanted to go to the end with Kaylin. And we did talk a lot. Like, we talked the most out, out, out of everyone. And they didn't really show like, how tired of a relationship me and Kaylin is. Has, um, yeah. Um, but to be honest, a lot of, like, a lot of um, observation I made, uh, like, bar people right i ran i ran around and tell kaden about it and we kind of talked this out and i do feel like kaden was i i, I know that kaden talked with every single person right but sometimes i feel like she's kind of delusional about what's going on in the house and she kind of talked me out of you know my observation too so yeah but i love kaden she's a very nice person but yeah she, um but but sometimes like whatever observation i brought to her she kind of talked me out of that so yeah, so I believe in a lot of words she's saying because she was having more conversation with other people than I had. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, I, I'm very surprised they didn't show that on the show. Um, and, yeah, Anthony definitely got me food. Like, yeah, because I trusted him too. Um, Damien, I also trusted him um, because after, okay, so basically uh, before Katie left, right, she told me that she was in a free people alliance with Maggie, Damien, and her. And she told me that she made Damien promise to her that Damien would take me to the end and that Damien would never betray me. Like she told me that Damien looked into her eyes and and promised her that. So that was why I was kind of putting all my eggs into Damien's, um, you know, after like after Mama left, but it didn't work out. So yeah, um, I, I definitely feel a little betrayed by Damien. But I understand he had to do what he had to do, um, you know, to survive. Um, I, I, am, I am rooting for him. And I do and I do believe that, um, you know, like he's playing a very, like, under the radar good social game right now. And it makes sense that, you know, he want to, you know, he want to stay in this game for longer. It, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's one thing I want to say, too. It's like with people watching, it's like it's easy to say. Oh, why doesn't this person just go work with this person? It's very easy to say that when you're watching from home. Oh, this person just needs to go work with this person. When you're in the house, it's not that easy. You can't just go up to someone and be like, hey, we're going to work together. And they're going to be like, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't work that way. There has to be a mutual trust and a mutual understanding and a mutual agreeance to kind of work together. And it's not that easy, you know, because everyone's always got their walls up and defensive. And, and no matter when you're talking to people, they always feel like, oh, there's a hidden agenda or they're just trying to manipulate me or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, you know, you're like you say, like when Kaylin says, go talk to Damon and, 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 you know, he doesn't kind of accept it as much as you wanted to or whatever it is, uh, any situation. Uh, that that's yeah. how it goes, and and, and that's a, a thing that people I, I don't I think that people don't understand when they're watching at home is there's so much more just dynamics and and just everything there's so much more uh, to it uh, than than what it seems you know oh just go talk to this person and make an alliance kind of thing, um, yeah I think you know what, Eddie I think I think you did a good job I think you were a Thank great you. a great cast. Uh, I would love to see you do like I'd love to see you play longer and kind of you know we were bummed to see you go at the uh, at the double. Uh, you have lots of love in the family. You don't live far from me, man. You're in Montreal. You're like an hour and hour uh, and a half yeah. away from me. So uh, I'm gonna be doing some barbecues this summer. You know, you, Dre, William. I got all the boys and girls from Toronto. They come down. I have some barbecues. I'd love to have you um, at the barbecues. We're gonna have a lot of fun, man. We're not far away. Yes. I'll be seeing a lot of you. 
uh, we'll oh. be having a lot of fun. Um, is there anything you want to say uh, before you know we shut her down, or is there anything you want to talk about? Who do you want to win? Who is your pick right now to win? If you were to pick right now, who do you want to win, and who do you think will win? Okay, uh, to be honest, right now I do think that uh, Anthony or Dane will win the entire season, but I want Damien to win. Um, you know, because you know, like I, I I wanted to work with Damien, and I do feel like Damien is very likable. Um, and I do understand that, like he doesn't, he doesn't want to work with me because I didn't really give him enough enough reason to want to trust me, right? So yeah, I I do want Damien to win for um yeah. right now. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're Team Damien all the way. Yeah, I'm Team Damien all the way. Yes. Yeah, I, I you know what? I, there's he's doing. I think he's doing great too. I think he's got a, a lot of like uh, a good personality traits to keep him far. I think people are starting to trust him and stuff like that. I think I think he's doing great too. Um, who I, I don't I don't see Dane winning. I think he's gonna get caught. I think he's gonna get mm-hmm. caught a little bit down the road, but I can see Damien doing well. It's it's tough to say. I think right now it's anybody's game. I think it's kind of down to. I mean, nobody knows, right? But I think it's gonna come yeah. down to when the pretty boys kind of you know start going after each other uh, and all that stuff. Now the pretty boys. Where do you rate them as an alliance? Do you rate them as a good alliance? Do you rate them as a not so good alliance? Where where do you put them? You know, uh, as a as an alliance overall. To be honest. As much as I hate them, I would say they are doing a very, very good job. Because you see, like, they have been controlling this game so far. And, you know, a lot of people already know or had a vague idea that, you know, they're working together, right? But no one really suspects that they're actually working together as an official alliance. So that alone is a very hard thing to do. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, sure. So, yeah. So I, I definitely feel like they are very, they are a very good alliance. Um, they're very strong and they do, they do win competitions, you know, because in this game, we have to win competition. You know, um, this is why a lot of underdogs, they do not like to become underdogs because they, they don't really get a chance to have the power to make moves. Right. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely think, that, I definitely think that this is a very solid alliance. This is a very strong alliance game wise. I don't, I hate to say this, but I have to give props to them. Yeah, yeah fair. No, fair enough. I, I'm the same way. It's like, you know, it, there could be people you like or you don't like, but I always give the credit where it's due. And you know what? They're doing their job. They're doing what they have to do. Um, you know, obviously people want to see them go out of the house. A lot of people, the fans, they want they want to see the other side or someone else win and take some take them out or make them go after each other. Uh, but it's hard. Like you say, they're winning all the competitions. And that's the thing. And, and, and I even say – competitions are not a big part of the game. They're a very small part of the game, but if you have the right numbers and the right people doing the competitions and you can control the entire season, it becomes a big part of the game. But in a normal season, I think I think just all the big powerhouses are kind of working together. But in a normal season, you usually have a couple on each side, so they'll be able to take shots back and forth, where in this season, it kind of seems like they're all in one bunch and they're just picking everyone off one at a time. So who knows? Do you think there's going to be a triple this year or no? I don't think there's gonna there's gonna be a triple this year uh, due to the fact there's only 15 people, right? But yeah. I do feel like there there may be a jury buyback. I don't know. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah. Are you hoping for a jury buyback or no? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You don't care. What, okay. What do you think of Corey coming in the house? What do you think of Corey? Overall thoughts of Corey? Her coming in? Her gameplay? Where does she fit in? What do you think of Corey? Oh, I do feel like Corey is very underestimated because she came into the house being every single person's target, right? Or at least in the surface. So you would think that she would be a very easy name for people to throw out. But the fact that nobody is is even targeting right now or nobody is trying to throw her name out, you know, like, uh, like, yeah, as a big threat, like that is something that, you know, that he does does correctly i do feel like Corey. oh yeah to be honest like we just asked me who who, who i feel will win right i said anthony and Dane. i feel like Corey could maybe in the race too just due to the fact that you know she became she went from being target a uh, public target number one to be in such a good spot right now i feel like she would be a number that you know like both sides want her in so yeah, yeah and, and the sure. thing yeah and i think she can win competitions a lot of people keep saying that she will win a lot of competitions and she will right she's very strong and she was the instructor of the east coast strats you know what i mean and yeah um i do see her going far too yeah you know what i agree i I think uh you know at first whenever and it always happens every year when someone gets brought into the house everyone's immediate reaction is okay guys let's get together uh you know he or she can go out next week and we'll just move on from there um Everyone kind of does that, but that's the thing I find. I find if they can make 
get safe for that one week, if they can be safe for that one week, they kind of can fall back in the shadows and the, you know, the, the egos and the bigger players will always, always go for each other because they'll see it as like a waste of a week. If they get, you know, Corey out when, Oh, someone else can do it next week. Oh, then someone else can do it next week. Oh, someone mm. else can do it next week. Next thing you know, they're in the final three or four and guess who's sitting there. It'll be someone like Corey who everyone says, Oh, we could get them out next week. Hey, it works. It's a good strategy, but that's the thing is you just gotta, I think she can fall back in the shadows. I think she's doing a great job. Uh, you don't see a lot of her on TV. She doesn't get a lot of, of airtime. But again, like I said before, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think she's doing a, I think she's doing a good job, um, for sure. So you think Corey's in the running too? Okay. So yes. uh, Eddie, uh, anything you want to say? Do you want to say thank you to anybody? Is there anything you want to plug or shout out or anything? Go for it, man. We're gonna shut her down. Uh, but say whatever you want to say, man. Say your okay, final goodbyes. Want- whatever you want to say. Final like goodbyes. I am so like I'm really so pleasantly overwhelmed. I get so many support, you know, from the fans. I like it literally means so much to me, cause um, you know, like I I'm sorry that like you know I went out so early and I didn't get to make the moves I wanted to make. But yeah, like all of the support from the fans, I, like every like everything is just like it, it makes this recovery so much easier. Like that's that's really what I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's great, and you got a lot of love. People were cheering for you. People wanted to see you win, man. They wanted to see you win. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it's hey, it's a tough break. It's a tough game, and you did a good job. You should keep your head up uh, for sure Thank and be you. proud. Uh, Eddie, we'll definitely have a barbecue or something soon. Uh, I'll definitely be seeing you. Well, I'll see you at finale either way. Yes. Um, you're gonna go. You're gonna be a part of the finale. You're gonna go to the Toronto. We're gonna do, we do a big bash at the end where all the seasons get together. You're gonna be there, yeah. Ooh. Yes, I am. Yes. Perfect, yes. perfect, perfect. Okay, well, we'll see you there. Eddie, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Uh, always good chatting with you. And we'll keep in touch. Everybody that's watching, thank you very much. And uh, have a good one, guys. Peace. Yep, have a good one. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Hey, anytime, buddy. Yeah. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right.